Welcome to our webinar, our weekly webinar series on the Small Business Center. Today's topic is using LinkedIn to generate leads. Um, I just want to take a brief moment and mention about our upcoming webinar so that if you want to sign up for them, you can do that at smallbusinesscenter.com. A uh, few weeks ago, we did a couple of webinars. The first one was uh, building a website in an hour where we built an actual web website on WordPress in an hour and then a few weeks after that we did the basics of search engine optimization. The next four weeks that we are going to do four different topics which are going to be related to that topic. Uh, our next week's webinar is going to be seven steps to building a, a successful website for a small business. This is not a, techno a technical webinar. It's going to talk about things that you should consider when you're building your small business website uh, for yourself or your for your client. Client. Week after that, we are going to talk about Google Analytics so that you can understand who is coming to your website and what kind of traffic that's coming to your website. After that, we're going to talk about landing page optimization. In other words, optimizing your web pages on each and every web page on your website. And then a week after that, we're going to talk about website optimizer. Website optimizer is a tool that's also from Google. It's free. And what it does, it tells you which components on your website, on your pages are going to work. You can test two different pages and see which page leads to better conversion than the, than, uh, than of the two or three or five. You can do as many as you want, but you can then see which of those components are leading to a better conversion. And then you can optimize your pages and make it better and get a better conversion. So let's get into our webinar for today. Our agenda is going to be why using LinkedIn and then we are going to get into the meat of today's webinar. How to optimize your profile, how to build and grow your network, how to then add value to those people you're connecting with and of course most importantly how do you convert that connection, those views into leads? Because at the end of the day, we want leads. Of course, really at the end of the day, what we want is sales, but we're not going to talk about sales today. We are only going to talk about how to get leads. And then you have to go and figure out a way to convert those leads into sales. That's not what we're going to discuss today. So my soapbox rant for the day is this. Pretty much everybody that I talk to tells me that social media is a great marketing tool because it's free. Well, it's not free. It's not free even if you're not paying somebody money to do that. It's not free even if you're not hiring somebody to do that. It's not free even if you are doing it yourself because if you are doing it yourself, you are spending time which means that you're not spending time doing something else in your business that you should be doing. So there is a cost to social media marketing. It is not, don't, don't get into this idea that it's going to be free, even if you do it yourself, because your time has value attached to that. First of all, there's a learning curve. Every time you start marketing on social media network, you have to understand what the network looks like. I have been on LinkedIn for seven years. I joined LinkedIn in 2005 and I've been on it for seven years. I understand LinkedIn pretty well, but the first few uh, months I needed to understand what it actually is. There was a learning curve. And you know, I always say that I used to know all the answers until somebody went and changed all the questions. And that's one of the frustrations. As soon as you learn it, they go and change it. Every time, even today, every time I go on LinkedIn, I can't find something because they have gone and changed it. So there is that frustration. And if that's not enough, there's always more than one social media network and there's always new ones popping up. So finally, I figured out LinkedIn. Finally, I figured out Facebook. Finally, you have figured out Twitter and you're talking to somebody and they tell you that you have to be on Pinterest or you have to be on Foursquare, or you have to be on something that hasn't even been invented yet. So you have to decide what you want to do. So there is a cost, and don't forget about that cost. Having said all of that, 
there are tremendous benefits to social media marketing. The conversion rates are usually higher when you have relationship or conversational marketing, even when you have referral marketing. In other words, somebody told somebody that they should do business with you. Your conversion rate is going to be higher than advertising marketing. And I don't mean advertising marketing just in terms of newspapers and radio and TV stations, but also on Google AdWords or Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn. Advertising marketing conversion ratio is, is usually not as good as your relationship marketing going to be. So I'm going to get off my, my sub box now. Thank you for listening to my rant for a few seconds. So which social media network are you going to want to get onto given the fact that there is a cost associated with that? Can you do all of them? If you have resources for all of them, by all means. But the first and most important question you should ask is where are your customers? Are your customers on LinkedIn? Are your customers on Facebook? Are your customers on Quora? Wherever your customers are, that's where you need to be. And more than likely, you may find that your customers are on more than one social network. They may be on Facebook and they may be on LinkedIn. And so you start, and if you're just starting right now, you start with the platform that you're most comfortable with. Whichever platform it's going to be, because if your customers are in more than one platform, starts with the one that you're most comfortable with and build a repeatable system. Once you start off, let's say on LinkedIn, and you figure out after struggling for a few weeks, for a few months, you figure out these are the three things that I need to do and if I do these three things, I'm gonna get business leads, then you can just focus on those three things. Before that, you have to do a lot of different things to see which one's working, which one's not working, but once you have figured that out, then every week you can say schedule it and say, okay, I'm going to do this on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, or I'm going to spend 15 minutes every day at the end of the day doing these three things or two things or five things, doesn't matter, right? But more importantly, once you have figured that out, what works, you can actually hand it over to somebody else, whether it's somebody you have hired, somebody you have hired as an intern, or it's a virtual assistant, whoever, you can actually hand the system over to them and say, I want you to do that every single week or every single day or whatever the schedule may be. And then you can move on to the next network that you now need to understand and learn. And it doesn't just have to be the network or online. Don't forget your marketing channels are also offline. So, so have a well-balanced marketing mix. So coming back now to, uh, to LinkedIn, why do you need to consider LinkedIn as a marketing channel? It is the largest business and professional social network. It's not as big as Facebook. It doesn't have 800 million plus users, but it does have over 160 million members. And all of those members are business and professionals in their field. And if that's your market, then LinkedIn is a place to be. It is very popular. That's most, 11th most trafficked website. Trafficked website, I'm not sure if that's proper English, but okay, 11th most trafficked website. Uh, it is a global network. There are people all over the world, but with a local reach. So if you do business, if you are an accountant, a lawyer, a website designer, a florist, whatever your business is, and if it happens to be a local business, you can still use LinkedIn. As a matter of fact, it's very, um, very beneficial to use LinkedIn to do and connect with this local business clients on LinkedIn first and then moved offline to build that connection and build that relationship with them. But besides being a social network, it is also a search engine. In 2011, over 4 billion searches were done on LinkedIn. And interestingly enough, apart from Google, where you may be doing all sorts of search, for example, where is the nearest pizza place to my house? On LinkedIn, the searches are professionally oriented. They are business oriented. So people are looking for clients and customers and partners and alliances and, 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 and service providers. And in this year, it is estimated that, that search results will be even a billion more. So more than 5 billion searches will be done on LinkedIn. And these are all professional and business searches. So why should you be using LinkedIn? You can use it to uh, brand and position yourself. You can use it to discover new business opportunities. You can do it to build partnerships. And of course, you can do it to generate new business uh, prospects. 
and it will help you increase your revenue but because the cost of marketing is lower there is cost but because it's lower than uh, than other potential marketing channels uh, you may have a better ROI on that but most importantly on LinkedIn you can connect directly to the decision maker most of the time you know if you remember the old days when you used to sell and you picked up the phone and you call a prospect who did you reach you didn't reach the decision maker you reached the gatekeeper right and they stonewall you they didn't want to do pass you to their bosses right because they were the gatekeepers and that was their job nothing wrong with that that's their job and they're doing their job but with LinkedIn the chances are that you're going to connect directly with the decision maker and not the gatekeeper so that's a better opportunity to deal with that this webinar today is going to be basics we are not going to get into any of the advanced strategies but the four essential steps to the strategy must be you need to build a complete and compelling profile not just a complete profile but the profile has to be compelling and we'll come back to that in a minute you have to build and grow your network I'm, I can hear the questions right now. Oh, by the way, if you have questions, feel free to ask them. I won't be answering them until the end of the webinar, but please feel free to ask the questions as they occur to you. And I can hear the questions about building and growing your network and how much you should build it and how, how much you should let people connect. And if you have those questions, I will answer them at the end. But once you have built that network, then you have to add value to those connections. I don't mean sales. I mean adding value. And we are going to discuss some of that today. And then, of course, most importantly, you have to convert that into leads. And we are going to talk briefly about that. Oops. So before we begin, before you implement keep a couple of caveats. Number one is not everything we're going to discuss is going to be applicable to you, right? It will depends on what business you are in and most importantly it will depends on what your goals are and that is the most important thing you must do before you start your LinkedIn strategy. Decide what your primary goal is. You may have two or three goals on LinkedIn but you must have the primary goal because based on your primary goal will depend on how you build your profile. So for example if your primary goal is to hire people the way you build your profile is going to be very different than if your primary goal is to get more clients. Those are two different goals requiring two different strategies, requiring two different kind of profile building uh, techniques. Okay. Your profile is important because it's the hub of everything that you do on LinkedIn. Whatever marketing campaigns, strategies you use on LinkedIn at the end of the day, all of those campaign and marketing must lead a potential person, potential prospect to your profile. And therefore, your profile is a place where you must establish your credibility and you must establish your trust. Both of those things. You have to establish credibility and you have to establish trust because only when people see those two things will they take the next step and they would want to do business with you. So the other couple of things that a good profile will do for you is number one, it will it will it will rank you better on Google searches. As a matter of fact, if you have ever searched yourself, you may have noticed that your LinkedIn profile ranks higher than your own business website. So it's a good place to get do start doing that, but it is absolutely essential absolutely essential for LinkedIn search. If you don't have a right profile, you will not appear on LinkedIn searches. So here are two examples. Without even reading anything on two profiles, you can sell me right away which profile you rather spend time on and thinking about doing business. The person on the right, he may be the best business development person in the world, but based on that profile, I will never do business with them because I know nothing about them. I don't know if he's credible. I don't know if he's trustworthy. The person on the right, yes, I would consider doing business with her because just by looking at it, not even reading what's in there, just by looking at it, I can see that there's more credibility potentially and potentially more trust, right? And that's what you need to, uh, need to present to your, to your potential prospects. Your profile is displayed in one of the three ways. 
most of what you may be aware of or familiar with is this profile on the left. This is your actual profile actually, right? This is what you're familiar with. This is what you think the profile looks like. But this is not the first step that most of the people you want to do business with will come across with you. They will see your profile in one of these two formats. They will either see your profile here, either on, let's say you have posted something on a group or answered a question or commented something somewhere. They see your picture. They like the comment. They like the post. They like your answer. They said, okay, who's this person? They hover above your name or your photo. And this pops up. This little bit, little bit pops up. And based on this bit, I will then decide if I want to click on the name or the picture to see the full profile. If this is not compelling enough to me, then I will not click on to see the profile. So you have to make that compelling. The second way they may come across is if they have done a search for the keywords that they're looking for. So in this case, let's say they're looking for a business consultant. My name pops up. They want to see this, but they will only see this little bit. And again, if this is not compelling enough, then they will never click on the name to see my full profile. So there are six pieces that you want to make sure that you get right on your profile. The first one is that you must have a picture and the picture must be professional because this is a professional business website. Your picture must be professional. If you have a picture you're standing in your Bermuda shorts and on a beach in the Cayman Islands, that's not an appropriate picture for LinkedIn. Unless, unless you are a travel agent or you are a marketing manager at a at a resort on Cayman Islands. In which case, a picture of you with a Bermuda shorts on a beach is perfectly okay. But if that's not your business, then that's not an appropriate picture. A picture of, with, of you with your spouse or your grandchildren is not appropriate. It's appropriate for Facebook, but it's not appropriate for LinkedIn. Make sure the picture is of you and it's in a professional for photo of you. It's worthwhile spending some time if you don't have a professional photo. It's worthwhile spending some money uh, to get it to get a good picture taken. The second thing is your headline. You have 120 characters to write headlines. So take a second, go into your LinkedIn site and see what your headline says. And for majority of you, I suspect your headline says that you are a CEO, you are a co-founder, you are a vice president of such and such company. In other words, for, for majority of you, what it says is your position and the name of your company. Remember, these are the two things that they will see and what they need to see, this one or this one, and what they need to see is why they should do business with you. And whether we like it or not, nobody cares about us. Nobody cares if I am a CEO of some company. What they care about is why they should do business with you. So I'm, by the way, not suggesting by any chance that my profile is a great profile. It's not. Actually, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of things that I haven't done right on the profile that I have to go back and, and change, and I'll come back to those in a second. But if you look at my headline, it does two things. It tells me, the first sentence tells me, and tries to establish the credibility in the field of the business that I am. I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a business mentor, advisor, and consultant. This follows into the second sentence as to what I can do for you. I can help you start, run, and grow your company, right? I didn't say, and I did use the word specifically, you and your. I didn't say I can I help entrepreneurs run and grow in their companies because the person looking at this profile doesn't care about all entrepreneurs. They only care about themselves. So when I say I'm helping you start, run, and grow your company, that's far more compelling than, oh, I start people or I, start, I, or I help people or I help entrepreneurs or I help this, that, and the other. Instead of saying, I help you do something, right? So establish credibility and establish what you can do for them. Three and four are somewhat related to this, where your current and past positions must also give them the reason how you can help them. And this is where I'm doing a horrible job. Again, nobody cares if I'm a consultant or a director. Nobody cares if I was an e-business architect in my past life. 
what they want to know is what I can do for them. So I should have said something like, um, let's say, um, a small business advisor at a small business center or um, business technology consultant or a social media strategist at the University of Warwick, right? So that will give them a reason. Okay, what does e-business architect means? To, to most people, it means nothing. Actually, it means nothing to me either. Saying LinkedIn strategy developer, that means something. Okay, now I need to develop a strategy for LinkedIn. Maybe he can help me, okay? So those three are important. And then five is where your summary is. Essentially, it's your headline, but instead of just 120 characters, you have a lot more space to talk about A, your credibility, and B, what you can do for them. So in your summary, you expand on your headline and you tell them why you're credible and what you can do for them. And then number six is your skills and expertise, where you can, essentially keywords that you can do or write about your your specific skills and and expertise all of these things helps with search engine so in this case for example when somebody goes and search for a small business consultant as you can see i'm number three there are two other people who have done a better job at optimizing their profile for that keyword a small business consultant and they are listing above myself even though I am logged in, they're still linked above myself. So what drives results on search engine, on, on LinkedIn search? Why would you fare better than somebody else, for example? Well, for those of you who know about search engine optimization or have attended our webinars on search engine optimization, there are many components that go into figuring out who should rank better for search results. But there are two important components Let's say, for example, Google, right? What's important in Google? Number one is your keyword. Your keyword must be on your website that should appear what person is top, typing in Google. That's number one. The same thing applies on LinkedIn. Your search keywords that somebody's typing on LinkedIn search must appear in profile. If it doesn't appear in profile, there is no match. Okay, that's number one. And remember when I said, therefore, that you must first decide what your primary goal is going to be on LinkedIn. And therefore, you must then decide what the right keywords are for you. So that's number one. Number two, in Google, the other thing that's important is how many other websites are linking back to your websites. The more websites linking to your websites, the higher you will rank in Google. The same thing applies on LinkedIn. The more connections you have on, on, on LinkedIn, the higher you will result on LinkedIn. So number one, if your keywords are matching, that will help. And number two is the number of links you're getting to your profile. And then LinkedIn, of course, links are connections. So the higher number of connections you have, the more higher you will link uh, you will rank on a LinkedIn search on a LinkedIn search site. So those are the important things. Here I'm describing a little bit more about the optimizing of the profile, which which I will come. I will show you my profile in just a second. Actually, let me go into the profile now. So let me see if I can make this. It's probably too small. This is probably a little better. Okay. So let me go to my profile. Right, so we have already discussed your your picture and we have already discussed your headline, right? This is where the headline goes. Make sure that you change it. These are your current and past positions. So I need to go back and change that and make it more appropriate. Now, recommendations. I have, I have tried and developed my credibility here, but now I'm developing the trust with people, right? So anybody can sound credible on the internet, right? All because I'm building my own credibility, so I'm telling people how credible I am. I'm writing this myself. But recommendations, these are from your clients. These are from your people who have done business with you. So try and get more and more uh, people to recommend you. The higher the number, the better the number. Connections, 500 plus connections. Let me talk a little bit about website. This is the other place that people fail 
to do it properly. What they usually do, let me actually go back and edit my profile. So what they will do is that usually instead of, usually what it will say is, is the company website. It will appear as this, right? A company website or a personal website. That is a wrong way to do that for, for a couple of reasons. One is search engine optimization, but more importantly is this. If I have two or three different sites here, company website, company website, company website, what does that mean? Right? Somebody looking at my, at my profile, why should they click on this that says company website? It means nothing, right? But if I go back and I click on what I had before, which is, so when I, so let me actually, show you what I did here. So what you do is you in your edit mode, you click on edit and you change the website from company website, which is a default to other, make sure that it's other. And then you put in the title and I think the title was entrepreneurs or webinars. No. Webinars for entrepreneurs. Oops. Can't spell. So now what happens is that instead of saying company website, it says webinar for entrepreneurs, right? So I'm like, huh, do I want to attend an entrepreneur web uh, webinar? So I may not want to click on that. Um, small business experts, right? Are you a business expert? As I said earlier, we are looking for other people to contribute content. So I am actually, these all websites go to the same website, but to the different sections on the website. So if you only have web, one website, make sure that you market your website properly in those three different categories. What it is that you're trying to market, make sure that you change all of those. The other thing that people miss out on is the public profile. Um, the public profile in many cases appears as linkedin.com slash pub slash one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. When it should actually appear something like linkedin.com slash in slash your name, right? In my case, it's Rayhan. As I said, I've been on LinkedIn since 2005, so I've been lucky enough to use my first name. And as you can see, my last name is pretty long. So it's much easier to tell people just Rayhan rather than Abdul Mohni, right? Um, so it's, that's much easier. And then after that profile is shown up, um, then you see my summary. You see my specialties, which is part of my summary, but then you also see my skills and expertise. So this is all establishing credibility, especially establishing trust and establishing a compelling reason why you should do business with somebody else. Okay. So let me go back to my presentation. Oops. I don't like this webinar platform. It doesn't do it very well for me. Anyway, so those are a couple of other things that you want to make sure. Connections, recommendation, make sure you change your website area. Make sure that your profile URL is properly, it's not a number, but a name. And then make sure that your profile is public. By default, all profiles are public, for, but for some reason, people go and make their profile uh, private. And you can do that if you want, but then keep in mind that it's not going to be visible to search engines, to Google and Bing and Yahoo, and therefore it will not appear on those search engines. Right. So as I said, the most two important things that you want to do for profile for being found on on LinkedIn is you want to make sure that you have keywords that are proper that are going to um, going to align with the goal that you have right because that goal is going to drive what traffic you get from search engines uh, from the search engine on 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 LinkedIn. Um, Recommendation will matter, but more importantly, your connection will matter. As you can see, I have a bit over 900 connections. I think it's uh, 975 connections now. But more important than this number is this number. Connections, 956 connections link you to 14.7 million professionals. 
Why is this number important, this 14.7 million? Is because when somebody does a search, the people who will appear in that search results are the people who are connected to three degrees or are in the group. If I am not connected to one of the three degrees, one, two, or three degrees, or if I'm not in a group with that person, I am not going to appear in their search results. As I mentioned earlier, LinkedIn has over 160 million users, but I will appear only for 14.7 million users. Less than 10% of the LinkedIn population will be able to, will see me, potentially see me, when they do a search for the keywords that I want to rank for. Over 90% of the population on LinkedIn will never see me because my connection, number of connections that I have is not high enough. Okay, so that is a very, very important number that you should be looking at and paying attention to. As a matter of fact, as you can see here, that I've only appeared on 13 searches in the past three days. That's not a lot of searches if you want a lot of leads on a business networking site like LinkedIn. That number should be hundreds if not thousands of searches I should have appeared on over a week or two week period. Okay, maybe not in three days, but over a several week period, I should be at least coming in mid hundreds if not you know, hundreds, so at least 50 or 60 people, I should be showing up in 50 or 60 search results rather than just 13, right? That's that's pretty lame. So as you can see, I'm not doing a very good job on LinkedIn right now because the number of connections that I have are not very good. Right, oops. So that's why you need to build and grow your network. People ask me all the time, but if I don't know the person, should I connect with them? Well, it depends. You may not necessarily connect with everybody, but in my opinion, your first reaction should be, I want to connect, unless the profile gives you a reason not to connect. Other words, in other words, if the profile is not complete, and if the profile is not compelling enough, then you don't want to connect with them, uh, unless, you, of course, you know them. If, if you do know them, then you do. Uh, but if, if the profile is complete and the profile is compelling, then you would want to connect with them. And it's not because of bragging rights, oh, I got 10,000 connections on LinkedIn or I have, uh, you know, 15,000 followers on, on Twitter. Not because of bragging rights, because it will help you, number one, with searches. And number two, by introduction, if you are connecting with the right people who can introduce you to the right people who will buy from you, then you want to grow your network because growing your network means growing your business. The bigger your network, the bigger your net worth, right? So you do want to grow your network. You do want to improve, uh, have a bigger connection, connections there. So who should you connect with? Of course, that depends on your business. Who is your customer and who is the person who can get you to the customer? So you obviously want to connect with your customers and your potential customers, but you also want to connect with the influencers in your industry or geographic location. People who know a lot of people. So for example, if you're a local business and you're an accountant, you want to connect with the president of your local chamber because the president of your local chamber knows a lot of people. The president of a local chamber may not do business with you directly, but he or she is an influencer and can connect you to people who can do business with you. And then you of course want to connect with power users. What that means is power users are people who have a lot of connections on LinkedIn. They may not be, they may not do business with you and they may not link you with other people who do business with you, but because they have a lot of connections, by connecting with them on level one, you get to the level two and level three connections. So that 14.7 million number, that increase instantly by connecting with power users so if let's say you connect with one power user who has 10,000 connections, right? By connecting with that one person, you on a second level now, you have connected with 10,000 people, not even counting people they're connected to. So every time these one of these 10,000 people do a search for your keyword, you will now appear in their search results, assuming that you have done other things correctly as well, including including your profile. You want to get to 501 connections. Why 501 connections? Because after that, Google, uh, LinkedIn will just say 500 plus. 
If you have 501 or 5001, it doesn't matter. LinkedIn will only say 500 plus. So you want to get to that connection as quickly as possible because that adds credibility to your profile. People see 500 plus connections that think that you are active on LinkedIn and therefore if they connect with you, uh, you will be active with them. When you're connecting with somebody, please send them a personal message, not a generic one. You know, there's a generic message that LinkedIn automatically puts in something like, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn or something of that sort. I don't remember exactly what the message is, but it's a very generic message. Please send them a personal message. Tell them how you met or where you know from them or if somebody has told them that they should connect with you. If none of those things are applicable, then tell them why you want to connect with them. Give them the reason. And the best reason is how they can help you. Nobody cares what you have to sell to them, but everybody cares what they can sell to you. So tell them how they can help you, right? If that will give them a reason, hey, maybe I should connect with them. But also tell them how you can help them, but don't try and sell them. Tell them how you can help them without selling it to them. So start with the connections you already have. You probably already have a lot of email addresses in your Outlook or another email client that you're using. You probably already have a lot of business cards hanging around on your on your desk at office. Start with them. It's a great way for to get back in touch with them, right? You may not have talked to them in months or even in years, and but but if you find them on LinkedIn, you say, "Hey, Joe, how are you? It's been a long time since we have connected. Let's stay in touch with LinkedIn as well." There is a software called CardMunch, CardMunch.com, which is free. And if you have either an iPhone or an iPad, and I believe they may have it for other smartphones as well, it's a great, great tool. It it sits on your phone. And when somebody gives you a business card, you just take a picture of that business card. That's all you have to do. You take a picture of the business card and it goes and finds that connection on LinkedIn. And if you are, if they have a connect, a LinkedIn profile, it will, it will tell you if you want to connect with them on LinkedIn. If they don't have a LinkedIn profile, it will still store your card in the, in the database on your phone. Uh, with all the fields properly filled in. So their first name, their last name, their title, their company name, their phone number, their address, everything is going to be filled in completely. So instead of you taking the card and now typing that in on the database, you can use Card Munch to do that. Connect with me. Here's my LinkedIn profile. So if you want to go in, linkedin.com slash in slash Rehan, uh, send me a connection message. I'd be happy to connect with you. Um, connect with influencers, as I mentioned earlier, very, very important that you connect with influencers in your industry or your location, especially the influencers that are power users, you know, that president of the chamber that have all of the members of the chambers connected to that person on LinkedIn, right? Connect with them. Uh, there may be your other industry associations, uh, your local merchants association that you want to connect with. Connect with people that you are most likely to do business with, right? Search for them on LinkedIn. Search for them on groups. Find out who they are and connect with them and send them the message. But be aware, if you send too many unsolicited messages, LinkedIn might take away your privilege of sending unsolicited messages. So by default, when you have a LinkedIn profile, you can send a message without knowing their email address to anybody. But if you abuse that, that, uh, that privilege, LinkedIn will take away that privilege and therefore you can, from then on, you can only connect with people whose email address you have. Now, LinkedIn will give you one opportunity. If you do that, they will take away the privilege. And if you tell them, hey, look, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I didn't know about this rule. Please forgive me. They will give you that privilege back. But if you abuse it again, they will take it away for good. So don't be, be careful how you do that. Um, if you're struggling with getting to those 501 connections, uh, try toplink.com. It is a free uh, tool. They have a paid version as well, but it's free. And what it does is that you can download a file of people who have who want to connect with you. Now, I be a bit cautious about doing it for this reason. These are the people who A, either are not interested in buying from you, most likely they're not interested in buying from you, and B, uh, they may not even introduce you to people who will buy from you, and C, they probably will try and sell to you, right? 
but what it will do is that it will get you to that 501 connection so you will see that number it will also help you get a better bigger network so you will appear in more search results and of course if they start abusing their own privilege and start selling you too much you can always disconnect from them you can go and disconnect with them and therefore they cannot send you messages anymore so you can always do that but if you're struggling to that 501 number that's an opportunity for you to take a look at you can join groups to build your your connections uh, you can join up to 50 groups although I have seen that lately I've been able to join a little bit more than that by manipulating the LinkedIn system but not a lot more than right I mean about maybe 50 to 53 side, uh, more groups which is not really matters um, what kind of groups you should join um, join few industry groups in other words if you're an accountant and you join another group of accountants uh, you can join a few of them because you can learn from them you can share with them but mostly join groups where your customers are right because that's where you're going to get the business if you're joining a group where all the accountants accountants hang together and you're an accountant um you know you're not going to get a business from them you may you may but not necessarily uh, so join groups where your customers are so if you are for example if you are a web developer or a web designer and you specifically design websites for accountants then go ahead and join the group where all the accountants hang out right because that's your customer base and then you have to add value to your network you have to share with your network and you have to share with your group and I'll show you how to do that in just a second uh, but share and promotion obviously you want to promote yourself but most people tell me follow the 80 20 rule right the Pareto rule 80% of sharing valuable information 20% of sales and promotions I actually believe a 90 10 is more appropriate 90% of the time you're sharing with people you're giving them value you're giving them good content 10% of the time you are telling them something promotional something salesy but even then try and um, try and cover that up into something of value so what do you want to share if you can create content if you are a blog writer obviously that's the best thing to do but if you're not if you're like me and you can not create content regularly or on a or on a on a regular basis uh, then then share somebody else's content if you have read a good story on Wall Street Journal or even in your local business journal that's online share it with your content uh, with your connections right give send them a link to that connection and analysis of your industry and local events that's absolutely beautiful right um, if you can so something is happening in your industry you have read about it you have read maybe several different articles write a quick synopsis and analysis of that nothing major like couple of couple of paragraphs and 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 send that over to them so let me take you to my profile and show you how to share the stuff Uh, where are we okay so this oops move that out of the way this is my home page so in the home page what you will see <coughs> in the home page what you will see is the ability to share and you can share from here so let me actually go to small business center and get a link of a blog post my most recent blog post that i did da, da, da. and i'm just going to copy the link to this blog post and i will simply click here attach a link and i will just paste that link over Attach, and I can edit that if I want to right so if I for example I don't want to say the date in here because that's not really le relevant and I'll take the date and my name out because my name already appears there as well I can select if I want the photo or not but if I preview it this is what it will look like and I can click on share right as soon as I do that you will notice that it shows up in my feed and it will show up in the feed of all of my connections now what I will do next is I will click on share here and now I can share it with all of the people in my group 
And by sharing on the group, all I have to do is in the group name, I will type in, say, I'll just type in C, and then I can select which ones I want to share with, right? So I want to share, let's say, with all of these groups. I'll just start clicking on that, right? So I click on D, I click on E, and, and I'll start clicking on all of those, right? And then if I want to share it with individuals, I can actually type in their uh, in their name as well. So if this is something that might be of particular interest to a particular person or or several different people, I can I can type in their name because they're on LinkedIn and and they will get that. I'm not gonna and if I click on share, it will go immediately. I'm not gonna do that. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna leave it over that one there. So this is how easy it is to share it. Although that's not how I do it when I do it um, on groups. I do it separately, different way because well. It's a bit of an advanced strategy, but it does take more time to do it. This is an easy and quick way to do that. Okay, we are almost running out of time, so I'm going to quickly finish the rest of my presentation, and then I'll go and take question and answers. Right, so make sure that you're sharing, and the other place that you can connect and add value is answering questions. Um, let me actually go and show that to you because that's a powerful thing. Um, okay, so if you go back to your home page, click on more and click on answers. And what you will see is a whole bunch of different categories that you will see here that you can go in and see what people are asking in that particular category, right? And if you answer enough of those questions, people will rate you and tell you if you're an expert in that particular category or not. Um, so for example, for me, I, I don't use it too often, but I had one answer that was rated as number one in, in a best answer for one of those things, right? So the more you do that, the more people will get familiar with that. And frankly, this is probably one of the most underutilized tool on LinkedIn from a perspective of getting people to build credibility and trust. I know people who do nothing else on LinkedIn. They don't join groups. They don't necessarily even build their connections that much. They're not appearing that much on searches, but they answer questions maybe two or three times a week. That's their strategy they use. And they have gotten paying clients because of that. Not even from the person who had asked the question, but somebody else who had a similar question and like the answer of these people and they said okay I will do business with you because I like the way you answered it and I think you are an expert in this industry so what you want to do for example um, adding social media to a website somebody asked a question about that and somebody answered there's only one answer to that and it was about an hour ago right so I can do two things so I can read the questions uh, I'm in the process of updating my blog script finally and I've been looking at a lot of different sites and did a few screenshots okay I'm not gonna read the whole thing but let's say I read the whole thing I can go I can answer this question publicly so that my answer is now available for public viewing for everybody right I can answer the question publicly but then after I've answered it I can also reply to them privately and I'll say to something to them that look I've answered your question I hope that was helpful but uh, I understand that you are let me go read the question again so uh, something to adding adding social media to a website I understand you have a question I understand you're looking to add this here are three things that you should do to make it properly to do it properly and here are the two things that you should avoid doing it by the way if you need any help please let me know here's my contact information right you're adding value but you're also giving them uh, a reason to contact you with because at the end of the day this person asked a question Corey doesn't probably want to learn how to do it he may or he may not he just want to get this done right and if if you can say hey I can do it for you in 15 minutes he doesn't want to spend three hours of his valuable time trying to figure out how to do it. He will just let you, let you do it and pay you for that. The other thing when you're answering the question publicly, 
make sure that your name obviously appears and they can click on that uh, on on your on your name there and and see a full profile but also in the signature line make sure that you put your name and your contact details whether that's your email address whether that's your website address whatever it is even your phone number whatever it is they want you to contact with make sure that you, they do that right okay i think i have pretty much covered everything that i needed to cover on that um oh sorry yeah one last thing let me show you is 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 converting converting the call converting this to call uh, the the views into leads so you have now answered a lot of questions a lot of people are connecting with you how do you convert that into a lead